All right, what's up, Adapt Nation? Great to see you. Dr. Jacob Wilson here, Ryan Lowry. Um, it's, a, it's a phenomenal week. We're like super stoked that we have the opportunity to, to talk with you guys about a very amazing subject, which is, uh, you know, uh, low carbohydrate lifestyle in general, some of the research that we're doing. So we're pumped up. Right. We're super, super excited. And we're going to be presenting and talking to you guys a lot about some of the brand new research that a lot of people don't even know about that we've kind of been doing uh, for the past couple of months and even years uh, to try and kind of give you guys an insight of some of the stuff we're doing down here at ASPI. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But to give you guys a background like um, on, on the facility, what is ASPI? Um, <clears throat> we are a research and performance institute, 21,000 square foot facility here in Tampa, Florida. So, um, you know, it's just, we have all the latest equipment um, on research to, to really study this topic in depth. Um, our passion, again, is like how, how can we change lives through science and innovation? Um, and in particular, like how can we change lives using, uh, by modifying carbohydrates in the diet? Right, and so one of the unique things, kind of how we got into this, right? How do we really get into this whole performance realm? Well, both of us were athletes. Uh, Jacob played uh, hockey. I played baseball. And, you know, a couple of years ago, we were, at a, we were at a really big conference. It's called the National Strength and Conditioning Association Conference. And we were sitting there, and one of our really good friends and colleagues, Dr. Jeff Volick, was on stage presenting, and he was talking about all of this great data that he had on endurance athletes. And he was talking about how he's seeing incredible things with endurance athletes and how they can adapt and adapt and, and really uh, kind of perform really well on a low-carb ketogenic diet. And so we, someone in the audience got up and they, they stood up and they're like, hey, but uh, what about resistance trained athletes? Have you done anything for people who are resistance training, trying to build muscle or lose fat? Like, what about those individuals? And he goes, to be honest, we don't have any data. Yeah. And so Doc and I looked at each other, we said, man, got a lot of work to do. And so we knew exactly at that point, you know, there's a lot of unanswered questions and that's really what we strive to do here at ASPI is take a lot of these complex questions that we have and things that people want to know about and really put them to the test and answer them down here. Exactly right. So that's been our research for the last couple of years. Um, we started off and our first question was on a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, can you, uh, can you actually improve muscle mass and uh, we actually hypothesize that when you do a ketogenic diet that maybe you gain kind of half as much muscle but wouldn't lose as much fat or would, but would lose more fat um, but we actually found out the opposite we found out that uh, we took highly resistance trained guys um, and we put them on a ketogenic diet versus a, a carbohydrate based diet and we found that they gained actually just as much muscle as when they were on carbs but they, they had a lot more favorable change in body fatness. Right, and so we kind of were like, how is this possible? How can you gain the same amount of muscle um, eating a very low carbohydrate diet? So we, we decided to look at like mechanistically, like what's going on truly uh, with your muscle tissue. So we actually t did a study and we teamed up with Dr. Mike Roberts at Auburn University and they're doing incredible, incredible research um, on animal models, looking at things like protein synthesis. So we actually took ketones themselves, which is what you make when you're on a ketogenic diet. So we found that animals and when you actually supplement with exogenous ketones, you actually increase muscle protein synthesis. So ketones themselves may be responsible for not only preventing the breakdown of muscle tissue, so it, so it kind of helps you preserve that muscle tissue, but actually initiating the response as well. So it's kind of this perfect light switch to help you preserve and stimulate muscle growth. Mm -hmm, exactly, and you know, we actually have more evidence from that from diet as well. We did a study where we took individuals and we had them do keto dieting for five days, and then on the weekends they carved up. So basically, and then one group we had them do keto dieting for seven days. And what we basically ended up finding is that let, when they came in on Monday when they carved on the weekends, their ketone levels were very low, and they didn't get them back up again until Friday. We had them on a fat loss diet, like they were calorie restricted and doing cardio. The ones on the diet where they couldn't adapt because they were eating carbs on the weekend lost a lot of muscle and not much fat. The group that was keto seven days a week lost all fat, which goes to Ryan Lowry's point that uh, ketogenic ketones themselves may spare muscle. Um, so we think that's important. That's why, you know, but the, one of the biggest things that we get is like, well, isn't it hard to be on a ketogenic diet? 
And I think that's... Not with this guy. Not with this guy <laughs> cooking. Not with, not with like things like the Adapt Bars and, exactly. and everything that's coming out. And you know, the, it's, it's honestly, we kind of we kind of talk about it a lot and, and play, a down, play around with a bunch of different stuff. And you, if you see any of Doc's recipes, it's like, it's like how aren't you on the keto diet? <laughs> <Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> but, but a lot of times it's about making it a lifestyle. And that's one of the biggest things is I don't like looking at it as a diet, right? So it's, it's how can I incorporate this into a lifestyle? We both love cookies, right? How can you make things that are low carb, higher fat, and t- are cookies? It's possible. Anything that you can think of, anything, and we've, we've virtually anything that you can think mm-hmm. of that has a ton of carbohydrates, there's always an alternative. And that's one of, the be- that's one of the, our favorite things to look at is how can we create these alternatives and look at different ways to make it a lifestyle, something that can is sustainable mm-hmm. rather than just a temporary fix. Yep, we, we make cakes, pies, uh, like cheesecake, cookies, pizzas, breads, wraps. I mean, you name it. We've done right. it, and it's, just, it's phenomenal. So I definitely highly recommend it. And if you look at adherence like over long term, that's one of the biggest things, right? So people go, oh, that's impossible to adhere to. There's no way. And so a lot of our, a lot of our background comes in like the bodybuilding fitness world where a lot of people are just like on a super low fat, high carbohydrate diet. And it's like, well, for like bikini competitors and all these people who are competing in like bodybuilding shows, I actually think it's harder to eat a low fat diet. Like if you go out to a restaurant. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. You're cooking with like and all the vegetables yeah. that they make are smothered in butter. And it's like, oh, well, I want, no, I want just vegetables not cooked in butter and yeah. chicken. It's like, that tastes yeah, terrible, yeah. number one. Yeah, and two, exactly. it's, it's difficult to do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, so I think that's, that's a real point. Now we go to restaurants, Ryan and I go out all the time. We travel on the road all the time. So it's like, yeah, give me some steak. Uh, put some extra butter on it and uh, g- give me some like ranch, you know, it's just, right. it's a, and the other thing is you don't get hungry. That's the other thing is there are a lot of studies where eat, normally when you calorie restrict, your, uh, your hunger goes up, right? But there are studies actually showing when you calorie restrict on a ketogenic diet, your hunger doesn't go up or it actually improves, meaning your hunger goes down. And that's an interesting phenomenon. So ketones seem to provide that. Right, and so going back to like the, the athlete realm, one of the unique things is that we're seeing more and more actual studies come out about using this kind of approach and in different populations. So we looked at people who were super like high, highly resistance trained athletes, but one of our colleagues, Rachel Gregory uh, at, from JMU, and we actually did, teamed up with Mike Roberts again to do a human trial, but in CrossFit athletes. So you have these people who are competing at such a high level really a high level. Really high level. It's brutal. Like, cro- CrossFit training is tough. Like It would destroy me <laughs> if I tried to do it. So these people are competing at a high level, and yet she, she, for instance, took these individuals, put them on a ketogenic diet for, <laughs> I believe it was about eight weeks, mm-hmm. and saw that they actually, they not only improved performance, but they, they kind of had body recomposition. They, they mm-hmm. gained muscle, lost fat. So it's, it's beyond just what we typically thought it was for. In the beginning, when we really started looking at ketogenic diet, it was like, oh, this is good for epilepsy, or, or oh, this is good for people who want to lose weight quick, but it can't be sustained long term. But we're seeing more and more applications potentially come out from it. 100%. And the thing about in sport, you want every ounce, every uh, tissue in your body, every cell to be contributing towards that performance. And when you go back to the study Ryan talked about with Rachel Gregory, they lost a lot of body fat in that study, yeah. whereas the carbohydrate group did not. Now, they increased in performance the same amount. What that means is that at a lighter body weight, they're performing just as well. And that's what sport's really all about. Um, and, and you would actually say that on a per-tissue basis, gram for gram, pound for pound, they're really a better athlete. Right. And so one of the biggest things that people forget about, and they look at, the, they look a, lot of the, at a lot of these studies, and a lot of these studies you see they're done short, they're done acutely, yeah. maybe a week or two weeks, and they go, oh, it destroys performance. And the thing is, if you think about this, we've been, most people, have been carbohydrate adapted their entire lives, whether that's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. They've been primarily eating carbohydrates. And we put them on a diet in which we restrict carbohydrates for two weeks, 
and we make a claim like, oh, it's going to destroy performance. Mm -hmm. You don't allow these individuals time to adapt. So they're truly, there is this period of keto adaptation that we need to get over and we need to, to figure out how to optimize that before we make, hey, this impairs performance. We need to allow these people time to adapt to the diet and kind of switch to their, their metabolism to using fat as mm -hmm. fuel. Is that everything your body's got to adapt to, your gut, your body, whatever. And I think that's really, really important to understand and that's what we did in our research. We always adapt the athlete. Right. So what are some of the things that we're planning on doing, we're interested in? You want to kind of discuss that? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, actually, we're doing a lifelong study with key, you know, uh, ketogenic dieting and exogenous ketones, you know, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't know how much I can give away. You can tell what we've seen well, so far. Well, I'll tell you what, so far, the, the um, animals, and we have to use an animal model for a lifelong study, right, because they live about two years, and there's we no way we wouldn't be around <laughs> to finish the human study. But the point is that they're living longer. So basically the animals that are uh, on the ketogenic diet are living longer than the ones on the healthy, low-fat diet. So I think, again, showing how, you know, how beneficial this can be, um, you know, we're seeing, like, lower oxidative stress and things of that nature. Yeah, and, and then so going along with that, one of the areas that we're very interested in is things like traumatic brain injury. So how the brain kind of functions optimally. And we were really inspired uh, to this point by Dr. Mary Newport and Dr. Stephen Cunain out of, out of Canada, both phenomenal researchers uh, and just friends of ours that are really doing incredible things in the in the how ketones get taken up by the brain. and. Dr. Newport, uh, who I'm sure most of you know, did a lot with Alzheimer's and her husband and really kind of brought forward this, this idea of like these beneficial fats that can convert to ketones. Mm -hmm. And so what we're looking at is from an athletic realm, you get these individuals who get hit over and over and over again in things like football. And they come out of a game and they're chugging down all, a ton of carbohydrates, a ton of sugar. But what we see afterwards is these individuals are actually temporarily insulin resistant, right? So yeah. they can't take up glucose as well into the brain. So a lot of these different interventions, how can we maybe prevent that from happening or even after the fact, how can we kind of combat it, right? Yeah, and the answer seems to be, you know, at least partially uh, providing exogenous ketones or going on a ketogenic diet. So there's a lot of studies that are now showing like, boom, if you actually get a concussion, that you, you, you can still utilize ketones. Remember, think about what Ryan just said. You can't take up glucose as well, but you, your brain's energy needs has went up because it's injured. Right. So now you can't, now you're gonna have secondary injury, secondary trauma. So you wanna provide that exogenous ketone source. Now part of that secondary trauma is gonna cause things like impaired mitochondrial function, where we actually can utilize fuel, and ketones actually help mitochondrial function. So I think for these cognitive disorders, it's very, very important. In fact, uh, talking about Stephen Cunane, who Ryan brought up, mm -hmm. um, basically what Cunane found is that in Alzheimer's disease, while they can't use glucose as well as we can, uh, they can still take up ketones just like a normal right. individual. It's absolutely amazing. I think that's, that's an area that we're going to be exploring further, and, and a lot of research is kind of heading in that direction for really being able to provide this alternative source of fuel for the brain that we otherwise would have are just looking at we didn't really know that it was possible right? exactly we really didn't know so i think with a well formulated ketogenic diet and that's one of the biggest things as well that we talk about is what really um constitutes a, a well formulated ketogenic diet and ever oftentimes we'll be like oh i'm on a ketogenic diet you know i'm i'm eating i'm eating this or i'm eating that and i think it really comes down to, for each individual, what does a well-formulated diet look like? Like, what would you say? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, one of the things I think muscle mass is very important. So I do think that protein's going to be important. But the thing to understand is that when most people think of a ketogenic diet, they start and just think, oh, eliminate all the carbs, you get all the protein you want. So I'll tell you, the first time I actually tried ketogenic dieting, I can remember, um, I was actually, uh, I think I was in high school. Seriously, <laughs> I swear. I was in high school. And um, I actually, I read, uh, I read a book, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia. He's like, I, there's a thing called ketogenic dieting, you eliminate all the carbs, you eat all the protein you want. And uh, so I was just eating chicken and, you know, and um, lean steak. And so I was eating like 60% protein, maybe like, you know, 35% uh, fat, and I felt horrible. I was like, there's no way you can sustain this. And so I didn't do it for years after that. 
tried it again later, I did the same thing. It's like, this is horrible. How can people sustain this? So it's good for fat loss, but you're going to feel awful the whole time. Turns out that that's wrong. The ratios are very important. So a well-formulated ketogenic diet, in general, at least the calorie maintenance, comes out to you know really about 70-75% fat, 20 to 25% protein, 5 to 10% carbs. So again, that's 70-75% fat, 20 to 25% protein, 5-10% carb. Now that can vary, but I'm saying that's a good healthy number. When you go below that number on protein, uh, like if you go below like 1.6, 1.7 grams per kilogram body weight uh, on protein, you start to lose muscle. And so you want to keep it at that. Therapeutic is a different story, but um, for gen- actually for even that for general therapeutic seems to be a good base to start with. Right, right. And so oftentimes we get a question. So it's like <clears throat> people will go on, go on a ketogenic diet and they're like, cool. Like for instance, we were, we were working with an athlete who needs to lose a ton of weight uh, very quickly. Uh, he's preparing for a big event over here called the NFL Combine. Um, so we're working with him and, and implementing uh, a slightly modified ketogenic diet. And so he came to us and he's like, man, I love this diet, it's great. And I'm like, that's awesome, you feel great. And he's like, you know, last night I had two Pop-Tarts and I'm like, what, what do you mean, what do you mean a Pop-Tart? So, but the thing is, a lot of people don't understand and they confuse, they go, oh, it's just, if it's high fat, that's all that matters, yeah, right? Yeah. And so it's getting people to understand and that's why we love uh, the, everything that ADAPT's doing and getting this mission, uh, getting this vision out there of education and educating people of, it's not just a high fat diet. Because if you look in the literature and you look at the research, high fat diets are, uh, are usually, tend to be looked at as bad. And the reason that is is because a lot of these high fat diets are often super high in carbohydrates as well, which is like a lot of junk food. So just, That's because, a, just because a candy bar yeah. has a ton of fat, doesn't mean it's ketogenic. It's actually the opposite. A lot of them have a ton of sugar with mm-hmm. it as well. So it's getting that education across, getting people to understand like, hey, it's, it's, it's a higher amount of fat, but you're minimizing that carbohydrate mm-hmm. intake. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about those carbohydrates. You know, speaking of like people not understanding things, even with an education, you right. might not understand ketogenic dieting. So for example, we had a subject in our study back when I was teaching in university. And uh, this guy was take, getting his master's degree in exercise and nutrition science. And he came up to me, he's like, hey, doc, so I can't get any ketosis. And I go, well, what are you eating? And he goes, uh, well, you know, I, I'm not eating any carbs. I said, well, can I see? And he had bananas like, you know, three or four times a day. He's like, bananas aren't keto? <laughs> I'm like, dude, like you're, li- like you're getting your master's degree in exercise and nutrition science. I've given you four lectures on ketogenic dieting. Bananas are not keto. <laughs> So, and that's someone who's supposed to have, you know, have a solid base. You got to be patient with people. I think that's one of the reasons why things like, uh, you know, adapt your life is important because they're educating you on this material. But in reality, when we're talking about carbs, uh, you know, we prefer having like, um, you know, vegetables, um, uh, you know, green vegetables, leafy green vegetables, broccoli, um, you know, cauliflower. You can make cauliflower crust, cauliflower pizza. But the main thing is stick with vegetables. Um, you know, that are more green in nature, uh, you know, and things of that nature. Um, as far as fruits are concerned, are there any fruits that you think could be eaten and in what quantity? I think the, the frozen berries are, are a good option. I mean, I know you love those in, mm. in like a shake or something, but those are really a good one. Just stay away from, the, from things mm. like bana- bananas and a lot of these high, sh- high sugar fruits are, can cause a lot of trouble, but the ones that have a lot of fiber are the ones that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of what we're looking at. We, we tend to stick with, like, like you said, green leafy vegetables, um, things like that. We love salads and just make like a nice egg and blue cheese and bacon <coughs> salad. I mean, mm-hmm. who doesn't love bacon? But, yeah. but we like that, but it's, it's good to kind of switch it up and add a lot of variety. And I think yeah. that's the point too. And so what we, when like personally, if I use berries, I kind of use them as a topping. Right. Or like, for example, you can make a cheese, cheesecake's easy to make. Like The we, best cheesecake, <laughs> the best. Cheesecake, we have literally hundreds of cheesecakes we've made. And then the, what we do is like, crust instead of graham crackers, mm-hmm. macadamias. Um, you know, you could blend it with a couple different flours. Um, and yeah, so that's the crust. But if you like blueberries, you can put a few inside of the cheesecake to have like a blueberry vanilla cheesecake. So it's more like a topping. Right. And I think that comes back kind of coming full circle. I think that comes back to make it fun and making it a lifestyle, right? It's You don't want to just be eating the same thing every single day and, and just be bored with it. I mean, it's make it fun, find new alternatives. If, if it's like, hey, I, 
I can't make this because it, it has some flour. Use a different type of flour. Use a ketogenic kind of flour. Almond flour, coconut flour, or all these different types of things. It's get make have fun with it. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've we've kind of been on a, a low carb ketogenic diet for a long time is because you can have fun with it. Because there's flexibility of being like, wow, look at this new creation I just made with cream cheese and pork rinds. Like, mm -hmm. it's 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 different. It's different from the status quo, but. It need, it's it's important to make it a lifestyle. Exactly right, so. exactly right. So, yeah, guys, I think um, that's kind of an overview of what what we're doing, what's going on. Um, you know, huge fans. Actually, one last thing I'll say is talking about fats on a well formulated ketogenic yeah. diet. You know, you have normal fats like your saturated fats um, and stuff like that, but you also have things called medium chain triglycerides right. that are high in coconut oil. And if you look at like the Adapt bars, they're really high in in like coconut oil yep. and MCTs. And so that's one of the reasons why like, I like those bars so much. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps me cognitively and really gets me kind of my ketone levels up when I have them. So, Sounds good, man. That's it, awesome. guys. Appreciate all of you. Um, you know, looking forward to being back. Um, huge shout out to, to Adapt and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. See you soon.